Alrighty, uh, packed up, left the hotel. Um, Mark and Lauren are heading down to get some breakfast and they're coming over a bit later uh, today to train. Um, so yeah, I'm heading over from Clearwater to the immigration um, location where the interview is. And I've, once I get there, I'm just gonna check that I've got all my documents. Um, I think I need to print out uh, one more. <laughs> so hopefully um, I can get that done. And uh, I just feel sick, honestly. Like when you put yourself through so much physically and mentally anyone that's done prep you know how like the psychological game that you play with yourself as you kind of go through the process and especially like the conditioning that I've had to get into for this particular show um, I'm definitely more conditioned lower body fat percentage than last time I competed in, um, in November um, just that tiny little bit extra has really just been an almighty effort to get there so um, I just don't want this to be all for nothing, but you know what, at the end of the day, even if I don't get to go, there's going to be other shows. It's not a wasted opportunity. I think um, we can learn from all of the experiences that life throws at us. Um, you can view them as a negative or you can somehow turn them into a positive. So yeah, um, definitely not a wasted experience if I don't get this um, permit today. So see how we do. Alright, so we have not had a chance to vlog today because we've had a little bit of a frustrating day, haven't we? So we got off the plane in Bahamas, we got here, so go team, and they lost my fucking luggage. So that was the first part. They don't know where it is. Somehow they lost, they got one piece. I actually don't know where it is. But the, somehow, on a direct flight that's less than two hours that we checked in for, two hours before the fucking flight, they don't know where the luggage is. Silver Airlines. Uh, Silver Airways. Good job, guys. Great job. Awesome. And then I've been trying to get a hold of customer support, and nobody's called me back, so that's wonderful. Really? Then we got to the hotel. We're like, all right, we'll relax. Holly's going to get some food with Lauren, and then we'll cook some stuff, and you'll go do cardio. Yeah. And then the real shit show began. Where do we start? So, okay, so first off, I'm working while they're out um, getting food. No, they screwed up our room first. They screwed up our room first. They put us in the wrong room. No big deal. They, they moved us to another room. That took mm -hmm. about 20 minutes, whatever. Mm -hmm. They were very nice about it. Mm -hmm. Then, while Holly's out getting groceries, I'm working, I'm doing some stuff, and I hear this beep, 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 and I deduce that the smoke detector is not going off, but that the batteries are low. It sounds like a, it's like a low beep. Very annoying, but I call down to the, uh, the uh, guest services, and they're like, oh, we'll, we'll call security, or whoever it was. Two hours later, after five phone calls, five, I have to physically go downstairs <laughs> and talk to someone. Then they disappear at the concierge desk. They didn't help me. Finally, I ask somebody, I say, who is the person who runs this hotel? This is the Grand Hyatt Bahamar, I think? Yeah. Who runs this hotel? So finally, I speak to the manager, uh, Michelle, who actually comes up to the room and actually helps us. So thank you to Michelle. Yeah. She was actually great. <laughs> Everyone else under her, you guys suck. So finally, what I had deduced two hours earlier, the, the, the thing was low on battery, they send the engineers up and they deduce, yeah, it's low on batteries. No, but then sure. they don't actually know how to fucking change it. Apparently the person who knows how to change the battery on the fire alarm isn't on call till 11 p.m. at night. Which would be now. Which would be now. <laughs> so, <laughs> meanwhile, Holly's gone to the grocery store, gets back, She's got a lot hold of groceries. Up, hold up, hold yeah, up. you tell the story. So, um, nowhere here accepts card. So, oh, in a, the story before country, the story. This could be a while. Grab a Snickers. <laughs> we need. We have things called debit cards, and they pay for things. And here they're like, oh no, we don't use any debit cards. So, Lauren and I. You can't even play with credit card. No, you couldn't pay with anything in this to do with the hotel or to do with the taxis. So, we're like trying to find a 
uh, ATM in the hotel. Well, let me tell you, we checked like three different ATMs inside this hotel, none of which worked. Uh, we had to, it was probably like a 15 minute walk around the hotel. By the way, this is supposed to be like a five star so hotel. None of the ATMs were. We finally find one, finally works. Um, and meanwhile, we were like, oh god, I hope our taxi driver doesn't hate us because we had to run away. So we get back 20 minutes later after finding one, and we are like, okay, we're gonna go to the grocery store. Please take us here. We go through the grocery store. I'm thinking, Gee, it's a bit shady. Found a few things. I got the last packet of chicken breast. That's because all the fitness bitches already been there. <laughs> In the entire grocery store. This is a hot, like, pox grocery store. Um, and it's called Quality Grocer as well. <laughs> the and then we find out. Hold that, up, hold yeah. up, hold up. So, my first meal, I, I go to start cooking, we get back to the room, and I'm like, great, I've got a kitchen, this is awesome. Not a single chopping knife, no cutting board, no can opener, no crockery, nothing. No but knife. wait, <laughs> we didn't get the groceries for an hour oh, yeah. because the bell desk took an hour to bring the groceries to the fucking room. <laughs> After I called three times, finally, I go down, because Holly's literally starving. I hadn't eaten in like seven hours, and you can't just eat anything on prep week. Yeah. Sodium. Yeah. So I go peppers. downstairs, get to the bottom of the elevator, and what is sitting in front of me at the bottom of the elevator, uh, elevator but our groceries on a there. baggage cart just sitting there doing nothing. So I'm like, hello? Hello? Fuck it. So I grab them, <laughs> take them up to the room. So yeah, all of our food's hot at this point. So finally, yeah. as I was saying, yeah. As she's cooking, <laughs> she discovers this. Yeah, so I'm, I'm cooking and I have nothing to make anything with. They've got like the pans, which is excellent. I'm like, oh, I guess I'll just slice big holes in there, chopping in their bench. Meanwhile, the fucking alarm is still beeping. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I think we called about seven times and I'd already basically finished cooking by the time someone bought a can opener up at 10.30. No shit, I started cooking at seven, it was 10.30. Um, and what else? Well, we had to switch rooms because they figured out they couldn't actually fix the fire alarm. They didn't know how to yeah. fix it. The engineers didn't know how to fix it. I know, funny. So made my meals. My God, heaven forbid something like that actually needs engineering breaks at this fucking hotel. Oh my God, can you imagine? <laughs> they can't change a fucking They're fire like alarm battery. To, listening to the fridge. <laughs> oh my God. So I made my meals. I like this is it's ten o'clock when I finally get to eat because I had to like stab the can to get the tomatoes <laughs> out of the can and it was just everywhere and I'm like just getting so angry. And Meanwhile, she's made me a grilled cheese sandwich that wasn't grilled no, because was, that's all we had. Yeah, there was, oh my god, no plate or anything either. Um, and I was like, oh, I still have so many, I need to eat some more protein. So I was like, okay, I'll do the, I'm just going to go for what I know. I grab out the yogurt, which I'd gotten from the store, which was $8.50 for Oikos. Oikos. Fat free. Um, plain yogurt. But it had much more carbs in it than you used to. I, I look at the label and it's 21 carbs, not my normal seven. And I'm like, fuck my life. I don't even have that many carbs left. So I'm like, okay, I'll go for the milk. And I'm like, meanwhile, I'm like fat famished. And I go to grab one of my diet Mountain Dews in a six pack. And I take a photo and I send it to Lane. He's downstairs eating dinner. I'm like, Half of them have been opened. Two of them are opened and the use by date is like two days away. And I'm like, oh my god, I can't deal with this. But do I dare drink the ones that have not been? <laughs> I'm famished. I'm like, I need a fucking drink. So excuse me. So I have my drink and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna make a bloody smoothie. So I go to grab my eight Meanwhile, the alarm is still beeping! I'm like, okay, I'm gonna make a, a smoothie. I packed some protein. I can't fuck that up. So I grab the uh, the unsweetened almond milk this stuff. <laughs> I just want to just show you what I'm dealing with right now. Look at the price of this freaking thing. This is US dollars. That's about twenty dollars Australian. <laughs> no shit. So I'm I go to open the lid and I say to Lane, 
Let me just make sure it's sealed. Thank God it had its seal on and it's not out of date, which is great. So uh, we're going on eight minutes on this video rant, so we better wrap it up. <laughs> oh my God, I just can't even. Oh, and then I was like, I need some fiber. I've had like two grams of fiber today. I go to make a salad, pull out my spinach, go to put the spinach in. And I'm like, just based on the diet Mountain Dew, I'm just gonna check the date. Five days old. Like it's the 2nd of August when the lettuce was due. Oh, you want some good old salmonella before your show? And I had salmonella poisoning last year because I ate a salad a week out. So fuck that. I threw that $8 bag, $8 bag of spinach out as well. Um, so. But on the plus side, we got a free night. They did comp us a night, so. I, I don't show. care whether they gave us a free night. My, I would have rather just stay home. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we are here, yeah. and you're going to get to compete, and you yeah. look in great shape, and tomorrow's a new day. So, uh, fuck, you, fuck you, Silver Airways, <laughs> fuck you, Grand Hyatt, <laughs> Bahamar, <laughs> except Michelle, because she's lovely. Yeah, she was. And, and the uh, grocery store, quality and grocers, fuck, fuck you. quality grocers. <laughs> and you know what? But I think we front loaded all our stress, so hopefully the rest of the week's gonna go real. No, I'm still waiting on my costume. Oh yeah, the costume's not here yet. Mm. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's supposed to be here tomorrow, but I'm sure they'll find a way to fuck that one up too. FedEx. <laughs> all right. I guess uh, we will check in I'm tomorrow in and bed. see how things are going, since this video is going on ten minutes now. Okay, so uh, I thought I would just quickly show you our hotel room. I think it's kind of fun to see where we're staying. Uh, it's a really beautiful uh, resort, despite the shenanigans that have been going on. So this is kind of our room. This is like when you first walk in. It's like a powder room. And then we got a room with kitchen so I could do some cooking. And you've obviously heard the dramas about that, but um, anywho, we have such a nice view. You can kind of see out to the pool area of the resort um, and out to the ocean out there. You can't really see it from here. It's not very clear. It's just lying, being cool. Doing the social medias. Uh, and this is our suite. Um, we have another little balcony out here as well. It's a bit of a chair. Very cool. All my stuff. And then a nice big double bathroom. So we've, we've each got our own vanity. So that is our hotel room, it's a bit messy. Lane is still to get his luggage. His luggage got lost by Silver. They just, they didn't even know where it was for a little while, did they Lane? <laughs> I've called the office in Tampa no less than seven times. I've left three <sighs> messages and no one has responded to me. That's just nuts. Like. Talk about service. They just completely lost a bag and don't want to call back to even let you know where it is. I've already been downstairs this morning and had breakfast. Um, I just ordered an omelette with spinach, tomatoes, peppers, mushrooms, and zucchini. I actually took my own bread down, um, which is this bread that has uh, only nine grams of carbohydrate per serve. I used their butter, but it was already in those portioned out sections. And then I had uh, some extra sliced tomato and stuff like that. And I did eat some potatoes for some carbohydrate, which is good. So I tracked that in my uh, tracker. Um, this is my next kind of protein source, um, which is just a smoothie. So I packed um, a bunch of protein powder. I also packed um, some PB powder. And yeah, I'm just kind of making sure I keep an eye on my sodium. So that's the most important thing. Um, for me at this point not to go crazy and eat something that I'm not familiar with so yeah smoothie time Work. I'm so hungry 1200 calories sucks hello guys uh, so it is Thursday, um, 
two days until the big day. Um, this morning has been pretty cruisy, I guess. Uh, still very early start, so I had to get up at 6 o'clock this morning um, to be down at hair and makeup at 6.30 a.m. Uh, in preparations for the media day. So we had like a white event. So all the contestants were to meet down at the convention center at 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, we kind of got to mingle again and it was a great opportunity to meet some of the other competitors, which was actually a little bit daunting for me. I'm not naturally somebody that is an extrovert and likes to chat, but um, I am growing every day and I feel like certainly over the last you know, five years of my life with all the travel that I've been doing and moving around, I've really had to um, make more of an effort to be a bit more of an outgoing personality. So um, it was so nice to meet all the girls. Um, and then we did all of our photos. So they called us out in country uh, by division. Um, and yeah, we had all our group photos. So that was really nice. Um, everyone looked amazing. All the dresses and the effort that goes into these events is just incredible. Like, wow, it blew my mind just how beautiful and well presented everybody uh, is at these events. So. Um, I've come home, I did a little bit of work on social media and then had to go down and get my last kind of harder or the hardest session I guess for the next two days in. So I went down to the hotel gym and I uh, did a full body 45, actually it was more like an hour circuit, just taking all the weights right back down, like nothing to failure. Uh, which is kind of hard for me. I feel like I'm just in there fart assing around wasting my time, but it's necessary. You know, I'm starting to eat some more carbohydrate today. So I want to make sure that that is moving through my muscle. Um, it's not just kind of sitting there. So um, definitely important to kind of get a little bit of a pump. So I did that and a little bit of a walk and I've come back up to the room. Um, I've had some food um, and then I'm heading to a photo shoot with Kai York, who is incredible. Uh, he does a lot of very out there uh, photo shoots, uh, a lot of high fashion. Um, he's like an artist, so this will be really cool. It's at like a secret location. He's got a luxury villa on the water um, and it's gonna be beautiful. So Lane uh, is actually gonna accompany me to this. I've just asked him last minute. <laughs> didn't give him any warning so the poor guy is eating and moving and working at the same time yeah so we're about to head to the cab now and head over to the location for the photo shoot so let's do it hi uh, I ate my skittles um, <laughs> how does it mean like traveling around with me while you're still trying to um, do life <laughs> I think contest prep is a very selfish thing by nature, so um, I do understand that. Uh, the mood swings can be a little bit difficult to deal with. Um, and then I'm so feisty. You're, you're feisty. Um, you also aren't the best communicator, so... I like, expect him to read my mind at all times. Yeah, so that's uh, not something I'm very good at. <laughs> I'm uh, apparently better than, than most men but uh, not very good in general. Um, so yeah, like today, it was um, I kind of had my day planned out. I was gonna go train, and then I was gonna go um, just get some work done, and maybe have a little bit of time by the pool. And our video guy wasn't able to come, so she's, she's kind of like being a little pouty, and like, oh, it'd be so nice to get footage from this. And I'm like, all right. So uh, I hate asking. I don't like to inconvenience people, so. They was like, oh, did you want me to come? And I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, but if I would have known that, I would have planned my day differently. Well, so. here's what we're going to do. So I think... Um, you just owe me. <laughs> <laughs> so you. I think that it's really challenging. Like when you own a business, um, it's tough because this is really important. But, you know, business doesn't stop. Um, you know, we still have clients. Like, I was up until quarter to 12 last night doing client updates and I still didn't get them finished. So, you know, there are people that are relying on you. Our staff are relying on us. Uh, we have an Italian tour coming up in September. Um, and Lane is way behind on putting some of the content for that together. And they needed it a month in advance to be able to, like, translate and 
get it all together. So yeah, they're gonna hate me. Yeah, he's like behind on that, which you know I can I can see the stress hate, levels I, accumulating. I hate being behind on work. I hate it. It's it's probably one of my biggest pet hates because I'm not a lazy person. So, but I also understand like this footage and stuff is important to get. So. Mm -hmm. um, Hope you guys appreciate it. <laughs> it's actually really tough. I do respect the film community. There are people that vlog for a profession and I don't know how they do it. Like one great example, we had um, Zach, the flexible dieting lifestyle, come and stay with us. All the time. Constantly. His whole life. All day, every day. There's not one minute where something isn't being set up to be filmed or for the attention of being filmed. Mm. It's just it's very tough. A tough gig, you know. I I'm someone that really enjoys being in the moment, and like when I'm with somebody, I want to connect with them. And when you're wait, who are you with? When you're on, <laughs> <laughs> when you're on your phone, trying to vlog and document everything, I find it really challenging. Um, from that perspective, I just don't feel like it, it's a very meaningful thing, and I like that. <laughs> so. Yeah, I think these these are all things that we grow and learn from. I mean, they're difficult at the time. There are definitely challenging times, but um, you can turn it into a positive. I think um, the more experiences like this we have, especially with traveling and trying to multitask, it only makes you better. Um, and you learn from the mistakes that you make along the way. Hopefully you can, you know, piggyback off someone to uh, learn from them and perhaps avoid the mistakes they made. So it's great to have a mentor uh, in these situations. So if you are someone that's new to this, just, uh, you know, keep at it, keep going. Right, right boss? What she said. <laughs> Except for my eyes. <laughs> myself to be comfortable and to be confident um, and that's something that I'm growing and learning how to embrace as I've gotten older um, I no longer worry I don't worry about what people think um, and I think that more people should embrace that mentality um, and kind of steer away of the, the judging and the, the negativity that um, something like this encompasses I know what I do for a career. Um, you know, I'm a scientist at heart. I, I'm an educator. I'm an academic. Um, I'm a hard worker. Uh, I know what I stand for, and I think that you know, coming out and doing something like this showcases the hard work that I've put in. Um, you know, from an educational standpoint, I've had to learn to then apply it to the bodybuilding career that I have kind of thrown myself into and yeah this is capturing that at its absolute finest and this is just so cool so cool <laughs>
Cole. You can go grab you a Gatorade somewhere or something, something that's easy for sodium, that sort of thing, uh, and carbs. I don't know, but I've already got a ton of raspberries. Okay. I've got my wings. Fuck. Sorry. Are you able to get that? I'm legit thinking about putting these on just so I don't have to carry. <laughs> oh, just dropped Holly off backstage. Um, she's ready to go. Got yelled at, of course, because. <laughs> It's only supposed to be them, but I'm not sure how they expect them to carry all that stuff by themselves. But, hey, they're just doing their job. So, uh, I'm probably gonna chill out and watch the show. What's going on? Uh, I'm just trying to be really excited to get up. <laughs> to be honest, I'm feeling pretty crap. What happened? Um, so I woke up this morning, was pretty good, looking flat, threw a lot of carbohydrates in um, from a food source that is a low FODMAP for me. It doesn't normally cause me any problems. Um, I think I was a little flat on stage, just listening to feedback from Lane and kind of seeing some of the photos and I agree. Um, and straight after the show, I went and had a coffee and I also had a little cookie um, from our hotel. And actually, I think my stomach started to feel gross as we were kind of drinking the coffee and the lady had to remake it. I said to her, is this okay? It tasted like sour. And then I saw her like pouring the milk down the sink and I was like, oh my God, please don't tell me I just drank that. So I don't know if it's playing with my head, but I definitely don't feel great. So uh, rather than sit around and complain, we, Lane and I came, went down to the gym. I actually did a 45 minute like pump up workout just to see if I would feel better from moving around. And it's a little bit better, um, but yeah, I just feel uncomfortable so the last thing you want to do if you suffer from any kind of GI problem is be really like chirpy and fun and happy <laughs> so I'm gonna have to bring my A game uh, when we go back downstairs because we've got the red carpet event um, in about five minutes we'll have to leave and then straight after we are uh, doing the gala so we'll come back out in a beautiful white dresses and then it's time for theme wear for the fitness models the fitness divas so it's going to be a long night, uh, there's going to be a lot of amazing outfits and costumes and theme wear so I'm really excited to see um, what all of the costumes look like and then they'll do the uh, finals and the announcements uh, later this evening so we'll get changed out of our theme wear back into our bikinis so there's a lot of, a lot of changing um, going to be happening this evening so a lot of titties popping out backstage. Oh, and there's no one to help you either. There's no backstage helpers allowed. So you're just in there rolling solo and everyone is so busy. So you can't really ask for help. And I hate asking for help. So it's just stressful. And I'm not glamorous and I don't do this all the time. So, eh. <laughs> I would come back to help. Yeah, no, you got bullied out. but I, I did. You. I, I did. Why. I told you I would. It's a formality. You have to leave, sir. Like. You know, well, you're a gentleman, I guess, for ladies. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the plan for tonight. Um, I I know I can do this. I've done the whole prep. That's the hard part. This should be the easy part. So, I just got to... You can do that cardio that one night when you were, didn't even think you were going to be able to go. You got this. I've got to bring it. 
Time to go. We are just going back down now for the evening show. So we've got a red carpet event first, then show time. Mm -hmm. Should I have worn my white dress? No, I, I think you, you can wear whatever. I think they said then there's like another thing there. Yeah, you have to wear a white, white later. Yeah. Let me Do take one of those bags. Yeah, yeah. As long as you have your white dress. Yes, I have it. Great. Are you coming with us? Yes. Yeah. They're probably going to kick me out and tell me. Anyone come to the, just come at the end? Oh, really? I gotta figure out some place to put this. Maybe you can just throw it in your bag when you get close there and you could take it. There you have it backstage. Maybe you could just vlog just a little bit if you think about it. Like if you have some yeah. downtime. It would work out. Feel better. Mm -hmm. What's that? Today. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to think about different shots. Yeah. So, uh, we have done our theme where I was so bad I did not use my camera to film anything. <laughs> I'm so bad at trying to record stuff. Um, but it was an absolute blast. I had so much more fun in the theme than I did in the bikini. And I think just going back on stage for the second time is got a little bit more confidence and um, kind of shaken out the cobwebs and you're ready to go. So we're just waiting to go back out for our awards now. So we kind of all come out again, um, back in our bikinis and they do all the announcements. So it's going to be exciting. Uh, the girls look amazing. The quality of the competitors is just awesome. So it's anyone's show. Um, yeah, the, the fitness team is all looking fierce. I love it when you call me, say I wish I could pretend I didn't need ya. But every touch is ooh la la la, it's true la la la. Ooh, I should be running, ooh, you know I love it when you call me, say I wish it was a so damn hard to leave ya. But every touch is ooh la la. How'd it go? Okay. I don't know where I came. I have no idea. <laughs> um, it was really fun. You had fun? Any other thoughts? <laughs> um, so, you were you... Do you know, you were, were you in the top 10? Were you in the top 5? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, wasn't in the the top, I wasn't in the top 5. So. But you were in the top 10. Uh, I don't know. How do you know that? Because I called out the top 10 and you were in there. Oh, they did? Yes. I don't know how these things are determined. Like, honestly. Did they say that? We, are, we can't hear anything when we're on the stage. Oh, they, well, no, they said um, we're going to call out the top 10. Okay. And then, uh, like, they were like, such and such, such and such, Holly Baxter, number oh, 151. Okay. So they had you step forward, everybody oh, else I, got shuffled I, I didn't know if anyone else even left the stage. I didn't know yeah. much else was paying attention. So you got a medal. You did metal. Yes. Um, Alright, well top 10 oils isn't too bad. Um, what are my thoughts on that? I'm very happy that I even got to go to be honest after all the stress and drop. Yeah. Um, it's hard to know what they're looking for. Um, I think, you know, it was a clear standout to me, like Hattie and Steph. Um, very I lean, mean, very, very muscular. And they're very muscular. I think Hattie was actually less conditioned, but that was intentional than last year. They might have said to her that to not be quite so hard. Um, those girls just have an enormous amount of mass. Like I've never really been, been um, around them in person. So it was um, interesting to kind of just look at their body structure and their body dimensions and you know, how that differs to my own. And they're just pocket rockets. They just have so much mass. Yeah, they don't look big in person with their clothes on. They're small. They're very small. They're a lot smaller than me. I'm actually probably a good, I don't 
don't know, 20 centimetres tall and then Paddy and probably 30 centimetres tall and then... You're Steph. not 30 centimetres taller, babe. Uh, That's like 10 inches. Yeah. Steph's really short. Are you a foot? She's 4 foot 8. No, she's going to be 5 foot 1. Okay, alright. She's going to be 5 foot 1. Alright. But so, you're, you're significantly taller I'm than they are. I'm significantly taller, so I think like I just look longer. So for yes. me to have the same amount of density, I actually just have to build my muscles. So, oh, that sounds like a hard lot, a lot of hard work ahead of me. But you know, it's it's good. I feel like. Um, Hold up! I thought this was your last show. So you're saying there's going to be more shows? I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, by the way, I called this. I knew you were not going to be able to not win and be like, oh yeah, I'm good with retiring. I need to come up with a strategy. So I think when Leighton and I get home, we'll sit down and, you know, map out the next couple of years. I think we need to talk we to the judges. We actually do this, we map out years, not just weeks. So yeah, I think we need to talk to the, talk the, to the judges, judges and, and see what their of... feedback is. Okay. I do really think that you need to take some time off from competing. Yeah. I don't think it's constructive to probably compete in 2020. Um, no, so do I do I compete in a few more shows at the end of this year? Um, mm. You know, because part of the part of it is also being known. Yeah. And I'm brand new. I've literally shown my face once in the last 12 months. So how the yeah. judges to know me or to feel that I'm deserving of a title? If I'm, yeah, that's you know. That... So it's a respect thing as well. You know, you've got to pay your dues. It's not like it's not like that in other sports and other federations. So. It might be a, um, a good idea for me to keep competing. Um, well, I will say that, like, um, yeah, uh, and it's not, this is not, we're not saying that the judges didn't place her in the tops because um, because they just didn't know her or she's, that's not it. What we're saying is there's the power of suggestion and subconsciously, if they know if somebody, with someone, yeah, yeah. they're more likely to stand out. So, and also, um, I, I know my flaws, and there are things I can work and improve on. So, you know, that stuff that I, I, think I, can, you, I can keep practicing, keep being better at. Like, no one's perfect. I do think a lot of heavy weighted ab work, I think you need to try to build whatever muscle you can in your abdominals. Yeah. Both Steph and Hattie have very different separation in their abdominals. They do, and I don't naturally have that. So, for me to have that same look, I need the density of muscle added to create yeah. the illusion that I have deep set abdominals. It's just not my natural structure. So, right. Um, I mean, I've seen a big improvement just this year, making a little bit more of an emphasis on it. I probably didn't do it enough. later in the year, take a bit of a reverse, get, get back to sanity. Well, that, that means you're going to have to really keep it tight. Keep it tight. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, I just got my lab results back in actually from my your, final week of... Your labs ain't looking too good. <laughs> no, and we'll talk, we'll do a more detailed discussion about the different hormone panels that we test um, throughout my research study. And why they're important, why it's significant why it's a good indication that I probably should take some time off. Um, yeah. So... I think we need to sit... This go. is so cool. Sorry, I just saw a really cool tiki bar. <laughs> <laughs> you like TP bars. No, that's cool. Look at it. Oh, hear, for the love of... I can hear music. Oh, my God. There's, like, little cafes everywhere. Oh, my God. Here beach. we go. Oh, it's a cafe. It's so nice. Uh -huh. Loud music. All the algorithms. So, today, um, <laughs> we're actually on the way to the gym. Um, I think it's really important to make sure that, you know, you try to keep some of those good behaviors. A lot of people, competitors, will make the mistake of just going YOLO in those, you know, days after the show. YOLO! You're only lean once. Yeah, and it really can set you back a long way. So this is kind of an important period in the post-show setting where your metabolism is great. And, uh, you know, you, you can regain body fat very rapidly if, yeah. you're, if you're not careful because your metabolism is slowed and we, we see that in my, um, my resting metabolic rate testing that came down by another 100 calories in the last uh, lot of our phase of testing. So, um, yeah, really important to stay smart. You know, probably just make some sensible choices today. Yeah. And, uh, 
yeah, we'll keep training this week. Yeah. I there's love some training. really, there's Please some really, yeah. That's the thing. It's like you don't, you don't, nobody has to prod you to go train. No, I think I'll enjoy it more now because the pressure's off. <laughs> now yeah. it's like okay. Now you can train because you want to, not because to. you have to. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and there's a lot of good research that shows that if you train hard, uh, post diet actually it's really better helps. Than just calorie restriction. Yeah, yeah, it really helps with, with preventing body fat regain. Exactly. So, so uh, today I'm literally just going to do whatever I feel like, and I haven't been able to bench press for a little while. It's made in my program, um, so I'm going to do some chest work today. Starting with some dumbbells, I'm going to do a pyramid. I've done 12, 10, I'm going for my third set with eight reps, and then we're going to move over to the bench press, and I'm going to do some block pressing. Thank you. 